Hello, it's Eric from Strong Medicine. This is another demonstration of an oral presentation of a medical HMP. As with the previous one, I'll be giving two demonstrations of the same case. The first will be a relatively detailed, so-called complete HMP that I would expect of a clerkship student on a service that was not unusually busy. The second will be a much more concise version that I'd expect from a seasoned resident or from an intern or sub-I who was on an unusually busy team for which the presentation of a complete HMP was just not practical. The primary source of information is the patient who appears reliable, though the interview was deliberately kept brief due to her acute illness. The chief complaint, Ms. White is a 38-year-old woman with no relevant past medical or social history who presented with dyspnea for several hours. Uh, Ms. White uh, reported being in her usual state of health until five days ago, at which time she was struck by a bicyclist while at work at a high school, resulting in a scrape to her right lateral calf against a parking lot pavement. It was cleaned and dressed at the time by the school nurse. Uh, and then three days ago, she had the onset of worsening pain and swelling in the right leg. She saw an outpatient physician who diagnosed her with cellulitis and started cephalexin. Uh, despite taking the antibiotic as prescribed, one day ago she developed a subjective fever and chills and was generally just kind of feeling poorly. Then last night, or maybe in the early hours of the morning, her husband thought she appeared to be unwell, so he woke her in order to check up on how she was doing. At that point, the patient reported she felt her breathing was difficult, she was diaphoretic, and had a measured temperature of 102. So that prompted her to come to the ER. She reported no pain in her left leg, her abdomen, chest, or neck. She reported no nausea, vomiting, changes in bowel habits, or lightheadedness. Her past medical history uh, is only notable for childhood asthma, which has been asymptomatic for many years. Surgical, OBGYN, and psychiatric histories were not explicitly discussed. Her only medication has been the aforementioned cephalexin four times a day. She takes no over-the-counter meds or supplements. Um, regarding her social history, uh, she lives in a condo in Cupertino with her husband uh, and their four-year-old daughter. Both of their health is fine. She works as a high school physics and chemistry teacher, uh, but she reports no recent chemical exposures at work uh, from any kind of experiment or demonstration. Uh, she has no pets at home or other animal exposures. Her only recent travel was to Los Angeles two months ago. She drinks a couple of beers or glasses of wine on the weekend. She is a non-smoker and she reports no history of recreational drug use. Family history and additional review of systems were not covered. On physical exam, obtained after two liters of IV fluids in the ER, Ms. White appeared fatigued and a bit unwell. Her temperature was 38.5, her pulse was 118, blood pressure 85 over 62, respiratory rate 26, and O2 sat 92% on four liters via nasal cannula. She had moderate crackles throughout both lungs. On cardiovascular exam, she had a regular tachycardia with normal S1 and S2, with no murmurs or gallops. Her JVP was not visible with her at 30 degrees. Her radial DP and PT pulses were all diminished bilaterally. POCUS revealed a collapsing non-dilated IVC and hyperdynamic LV function. Abdomen was soft and non-tender. Her right leg had an abrasion to the uh, lateral calf that appeared clean and was out and was without necrotic tissue or drainage. The right leg was diffusely warm and tender with pitting edema extending to just above the right knee, uh, but neither uh, crepitus nor tenderness extending beyond the edema was present. There was no pain on passive range of motion testing at either the right knee or the right ankle. She has no palpable lymph nodes in the head, neck, axillary, or inguinal regions. Her new exam was unremarkable, though gait was deferred due to her hypotension and acute illness. Uh, moving to tests, her white blood cell count was 14,000 with a hemoglobin of 12 uh, and platelets of 135. Uh, chemistry panel was most notable for a BUN of 22, creatinine of 1.9, and an anion gap of 19. Her lactate was 4.2, uh, and troponin was normal. A chest X-ray was a uh, reasonable quality portable film with moderate diffuse bilateral pulmonary edema. 
Uh, she had no effusions, and she had a normal cardiac silhouette. ECG showed uh, sinus tachycardia at 118 beats per minute uh, with a normal axis, normal intervals, and no ST or T changes. In summary, Ms. White is a 38-year-old woman with no notable past history who presented with acute dyspnea and fever in the setting of a recent diagnosis of right leg cellulitis, secondary to trauma. The exam was most notable for fever, blood pressure of 85 over 62 despite 2 liters of fluid, an O2 sat of 92% on 4 liters, bilateral crackles, right leg cellulitis without signs of necrotizing fasciitis or compartment syndrome, intact mental status, and POCUS with a, with a non-dilated and collapsing IBC and hyperdynamic LV. Other data includes leukocytosis, lactic acidosis, uh, creatinine of 1.9 without a known baseline, and a chest x-ray with diffuse pulmonary edema. Problem one, uh, septic shock, secondary to cellulitis. Ms. White has sepsis as demonstrated by the classic vital sign abnormalities and an overt source of infection. Classifying it as septic shock, albeit relatively mild, is based on the persistence of hypotension despite IV fluids and her elevated lactate. The most likely scenario is that her cellulitis was secondary to a particularly virulent organism and or one resistant to cephalexin, such as MRSA, which then led to bacteremia. One consideration is whether she has necrotizing fasciitis or other necrotizing soft tissue infection. Although she does have serious systemic illness, the lack of crepitus or pain out of proportion to the exam argues a little against this. Uh, her uh, larynx score, a clinical prediction rule for necrotizing fasciitis, can't be, can't be calculated yet without a CRP level, but the remainder of the score's factors are consistent with relatively low risk, though this score has a suboptimal negative predictive value. The diagnostic plan for her shock and cellulitis includes following up uh, blood and urine cultures, which are already drawn, Given the lack of uh, known subcutaneous fluid collections, uh, necrotic tissue or soft tissue crepitus, there is no obvious specific indication for source control via percutaneous or surgical intervention. And likewise, a wound culture at this time will likely not be diagnostically helpful. However, given the low but non-trivial possibility of necrotizing fasciitis, which is a, an acutely life-threatening diagnosis, we will still consult general surgery and obtain a CT scan of the right leg. We've also ordered a CRP to formally calculate the larynx score and a CK, a CK level to evaluate the possibility of pyomyositis. Therapeutically, I would normally aggressively push more fluids using mean arterial pressure, decreasing lactate and urine output as surrogates for adequate, uh, adequate resuscitation. Uh, however, in this case, I'm, I'm hesitant to do, uh, to do this to be more aggressive given her pulmonary edema. So instead, we'll plan to bolus another 500 cc's of LR now, and if that's insufficient, we'll start norepinephrine. For antibiotic coverage, I'll treat broadly for now for, with uh, vancomycin and cefepime while blood cultures are pending, and we'll narrow as able. For pain control, we will use standing Tylenol and PRN oxycodone and IV morphine. Problem number two is her hypoxemia. Uh, given the combination of her chest X-ray with hyperdynamic LV function and evidence of low CVP, this is most likely non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema secondary to sepsis and represents neither pneumonia nor concurrent heart failure. We will continue supplemental oxygen as necessary. Positive pressure ventilation is not currently indicated. Problem number three is presumed AKI, uh, presumed because we don't actually have a baseline creatinine for comparison. However, in a previously healthy 38-year-old, it's highly likely to have been normal. The AKI is either from pure dehydration or from ATN secondary to sepsis. We'll send off a UA and FINA to help distinguish between these two possibilities. Though doing so won't necessarily change acute management, it will provide a very general idea of the expected timing of renal recovery. Lastly, code status and goals of care were not discussed with her but we will do so at the next opportunity. Until then, she will be full code. Given the severity of her illness, speculation regarding her anticipated discharge plan would be premature. Ms. White is a 38-year-old woman with no relevant past medical or social history 
who presented with dyspnea for several hours. She reported being in her usual state of health until five days ago, at which time she was struck by a bicyclist while at work, resulting in a scrape to her right lateral calf against a parking lot pavement. It was cleaned and dressed at the time. Three days ago, she had the onset of worsening pain and swelling in the right leg. An outpatient clinician diagnosed her with cellulitis and prescribed cephalexin. Despite the antibiotic, she went on to develop subjective fevers and chills. Then, in the early hours of this morning, she noted dyspnea, diaphoresis, and had a temperature measured at 102, prompting her to come to the ER. She reported no pain other than in her right leg, also no nausea, vomiting, changes in bowel habits, neck stiffness, or lightheadedness. Her only medication has been the aforementioned cephalexin. Regarding her social history, she lives in a condo in Cupertino with her husband and four-year-old daughter. Both of their health is fine. She reports no occupational, animal, or travel-related exposures. She reports modest alcohol intake, but no smoking or recreational drug use. On exam, obtained after two liters of fluids, Ms. White appeared fatigued and unwell. Her temp was 38.5, pulse 118, uh, blood pressure 85 over 62, respiratory rate 26, and O2 sat was 92% on 4 liters. She had moderate bilateral crackles, but no murmurs or gallops. POCUS revealed a collapsing non-dilated IVC and a hyperdynamic LV. Abdomen was soft and non-tender. Her right leg had an abrasion to the lateral calf that appeared clean and was without necrotic tissue or drainage. The right leg was diffusely warm and tender, with pitting edema extending to just above the right knee, but neither crepitus nor tenderness extending beyond the edema was present. There was no pain on passive range of motion testing of the right knee or ankle. She has no palpable nodes. Her neuro exam was unremarkable, though gait was deferred. On tests, her white blood cell count was 14 with a hemoglobin of 12. Chemistry is most notable for a creatinine of 1.9 and a lactate of 4.2. A chest x-ray showed moderate diffuse pulmonary edema. ECG showed sinus tack and was otherwise normal. So in summary, Ms. White is a 38-year-old previously healthy woman, now with acute dyspnea and fever, in the setting of a recent diagnosis of right leg cellulitis secondary to trauma. The exam is most notable for fever, hypotension despite 2 liters of fluid, an O2 sat of 92% on 4 liters, right leg cellulitis without signs of necrotizing fasciitis or compartment syndrome, and POCUS with a non-dilated and collapsing IVC and hyperdynamic LV. Other data includes leukocytosis, lactic acidosis, a creatinine of 1.9, and a chest x-ray with diffuse pulmonary edema. Problem number one, septic shock secondary to cellulitis. An important consideration is whether she also has necrotizing fasciitis. Though she has serious systemic illness, the lack of crepitus or pain out of proportion to the exam argues a little against this. Her Lorenic score uh, can't be calculated yet without a CRP level, but the remainder of the score's factors are consistent with relatively low risk. However, given the low but non-trivial possibility of neck fash, we will still con consult general surgery and obtain a CT of the right leg. CRP and CK are also pending. Therapeutically, we'll plan to bolus another 500 cc's of LR, and if that's insufficient, we'll start norepinephrine. For antibiotic coverage, vancomycin for now. For pain control, we will use standing Tylenol and PRN Oxy and IV morphine. Problem two is her hypoxemia, secondary to sepsis triggered non cardiogenic pulmonary edema. We'll continue supplemental O2 as necessary. Problem number three is a presumed AKI secondary to either pure dehydration or from ATN. We'll send off a UA and FINA to help distinguish between these two. Lastly, code status and goals of care were not discussed with her, but we will do so at the next opportunity.